I read another article about NBA shooting coaches and some of the players who are trying to change their shot uh, this afternoon. And in the article, again, it even says that it breaks uh, shooting down into two components, the physical component and the mental component. Um, and so the mental component uh, kind of discussed uh, Aaron Gordon and his work with sports uh, psychologist Graham Betcher, uh, who I happened to coach when he was in college. Uh, and then the physical side, you know, kind of talked about basic uh, technique, you know, where the elbow is, feet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a small mention of practice uh, when they're talking about uh, Shaquille O'Neal shooting free throws. Uh, but for the most part, um, there's a division between your physical technique that you use and then your mental uh, makeup or how you approach shooting, how you think about shooting, and how you react to a miss. Uh, and again, this is consistent through most articles and most discussions of shooting. As we talk about the shooting technique, you know, and you have to have your hand here, your elbow there, your feet here, bend this way, jump that way, look at this. Uh, and then we talk about the mental components. So better shooters are looked at as confident, um, you know, more resilient. Worse shooters are looked at as being mentally weak or, you know, having something wrong with them. Uh, in terms of their inability to overcome a miss or their inability to handle the pressure of a game situation or whatever, uh, you know, the argument is that those players are lacking. Very little attention is paid to practice. Um, you know, some people kind of give lip service to practice. They talk about how much they practice, uh, but there's not a lot of discussion about what is actually done in practice. Um, and so most of the players, from what I've seen, uh, watching NBA players working out, talking to NBA coaches, um, you know, watching college players work out, watching college coaches, watching high school players work out, watching high school coaches. Most players practice uh, uncontested, wide open shots where they know exactly who's going to shoot and where they're going to shoot from. So for instance, I'm going to practice elbow jump shots. I'm going to run straight to the basket. I'm going to receive a pass as I step to the elbow. I'm going to catch and I'm going to shoot. And I'm going to make six shots in a row. Um, you know, that would be an example of a drill. You know, or I'm going to do, you know, a five by five drill. So five spots around the three point line. And I'm going to make five shots at each one. So I make five shots at the baseline. Now I move to the wing. I make five. I move to the top of the key. I make five. I move etc, etc. So I know exactly where I'm shooting, I know exactly when I'm shooting, I'm receiving a pass in that spot, maybe I'm moving slightly to that spot, maybe I changed the movement a little bit, um, but I always know I'm shooting the ball and I'm getting it at a certain time, the pass is on time, the pass is a good pass, uh, you know, colleges hire managers, NBA teams have managers who essentially their entire job is to throw good passes to shooters uh, to prepare them for the games. And then we get in games, and shooters get a bad pass and they have to shoot off a bad pass or uh, there's a defensive player there or they catch a ball and they're not sure should I shoot or should I pass do I have a teammate that's more open am I more open is my shot a better shot than my teammate shot is my sh teammate a better shooter than me so I should make that pass am I a better shooter than my teammate so I should shoot the ball and all these things are uh, just ignored in the way that we practice shooting uh, from defense to the decision to shoot to the timing of a shot, uh, these aspects of shooting are ignored. And so if a player uh, shoots poorly, it's because they have poor technique or maybe they lack confidence or something, some mental issue. Um, and if they shoot well, it's because they have good technique and because they have uh, you know, good confidence. Uh, and, and not a lot of attention is paid to how do we actually practice from high school level on. Um, you know, and I even saw a, a string of high school coaches discussing this today and talking about, well, no, you know, of course you practice uncontested shots because you have to practice uncontested shots because that's what golfers do. Well, there's no defensive player in golf. Uh, a two-foot putt is a two-foot putt. Uh, and so the, the, you know, the lay or the slope or, you know, how the course is set up, that might change, uh, you know, and that may influence a shot from time to time. The environment is going to change uh, from course to course. Uh, but there's no external uh, decision to take that shot. It's a completely self-paced shot. I step up to the ball. I decide when I'm going to swing. In basketball, I can't always decide when I'm going to shoot. 
Part of that is based on the defense. Part of it is based on the pass that I receive. Part of it is based on the shot clock. Um, if I catch a pass with one second on the shot clock, I might not be open, but I still have to shoot that. Uh, you know, if I catch the ball uh, and I'm not open, well, now, you know, I have a problem if, if the shot clock is winding down. You know, if I catch the ball intending to shoot and now my defensive player is there, well, now I have to change. Or now I'm shooting a contested shot and I have to change my actual technique because that defensive player is closer to me uh, than I anticipated. And so now maybe I have to lean back slightly uh, or I have to shoot the ball a little bit higher, some strategy to get the ball over this defensive player. Uh, and that just doesn't happen in golf. So equating shooting to golfing, to me, doesn't make sense. They're very different. You can equate, you know, to some extent, free throw shooting and some of the mental aspects of free throw shooting with, uh, you know, putting um, in terms of the pressure uh, on a putt versus a free throw, the expectation that you should make a close putt versus the expectation that you should make a free throw, things of this nature. Where shooting during a game um, is vastly different than hitting a golf ball because it's externally paced and the environment is always changing. Um, in golf, the ball isn't moving, you're not moving, um, and you're self-paced. It's different. Um, and so just because we hit uncontested golf shots doesn't mean that we should always practice uncontested basketball shots. Uh, instead, players, especially as we get upwards of varsity, college, uh, and NBA levels, need to practice with defense because those are the shots that they're shooting during games. And it doesn't mean that every shot has to be 100% contested or you have to shoot with a hand in your face. But just the mere presence of defensive players uh, changes a shot whether they're two feet away, four feet away, six feet away, eight feet away, 10 feet away, uh, each one is gonna change that shot. Uh, one, because if they're you know, two feet away, I actually have to change the technique with which I shoot to get the ball over them. If they're four or six or eight feet away, I have to change the speed at which I shoot. Uh, so if somebody's four feet away from me when I catch the ball, I have to shoot it a lot quicker than if they're 10 feet away when I catch the ball. Um, you know, when they're 10 feet away, it's probably an automatic catch and shoot. When they're six or eight feet away, it might not be an automatic catch and shoot. So I have to judge, well, how much distance do I need to feel comfortable shooting that ball or to feel confident that I'm open to shoot that shot? And I can't uh, make those decisions in a game and be making good decisions and accurate decisions if I've never practiced shooting against a defensive player. If all my shots are wide open shots and every time I catch the ball in the shooting drill, I know that I'm shooting um, and there's no decision to be made. Uh, and so, you know, all the time I'm reading these articles and shooting coach after shooting coach after shooting coach, uh, and there's just a lack of discussion about practice design. Um, and maybe that discussion goes on, uh, you know, behind closed doors and they don't want to let, you know, people in on their secrets of their success. And so they want to focus on uh, your attention to the elbow and figure think that that solves all problems. But, uh, you know, from what's put out in terms of the public and what I've seen when I've gone to, you know, watch these players and these teams practice, um, there isn't a lot of attention paid to, to practice design. And we continually believe that if somebody shoots, you know, eight, 70, 80 percent in practice and then they shoot 30 percent in the game, well, it's a mental problem, you know. And let's hire a sports psychologist to figure out what's wrong with them. And if they shoot, you know, poorly, uh, you know, most of the time, well, then it's a technique issue. You know, even though we know the players like uh, Shaq and even uh, and Dwight Howard shoot a lot better during practice when they're doing block practice free throw drills than they do in games. Well, it's not the same shot. Um, when you shoot 100 shots in a row, it's different than when you shoot one shot. And you have one opportunity to make that one shot. Uh, it's, it creates an entirely different process of how you organize that movement. Uh, and the fact that we continually ignore these aspects of shooting, to me, is one reason why a lot of players continue to struggle in their shooting. Now, there's definitely other reasons. There are definitely technical issues or mechanic issues that some players you know, have, and they have suboptimal technique when they shoot the ball, even when they're wide open or that they're in a gym by themselves. Um, there are definitely some players that struggle with their confidence and they do need a sports psychologist. They do need some mental coaching or, or a different approach on how they're going to 
you know, approach shooting, approach mistakes, so on and so forth. But for a lot of players and in a lot of situations, I believe our practice design is letting down the players because we're not paying attention to how shots are taken during games and then using that information to inform our practice. Instead, we see how shots are taken during games and we see that a player takes a lot of shots dribbling with our right hand and then we ignore everything else. So we're just gonna take shots you know, from the right wing with a right hand dribble because that's a game shot. But we ignore the distance of the defense, the timing, uh, you know, the decision on whether or not to shoot or whether to you know, dump the ball inside to the post. And all of these things are part of a game shot. And as long as we continue to ignore these issues, we're going to you know, under, under teach um, and under prepare our players for game shooting.